Ahead of 2023 general elections, Dr. Yunisa Tanko joins us this morning. He is spokesman for the third force coalition of the Labour Party. Thanks for joining us this morning. Thank you very much for having me. Good morning, Nigerians. Obviously, you've been busy, do I need to say? <laughs> <laughs> but let's begin with that you know, conversation we had you know, when we began this program about the electronic transmission of results, the, yeah. the, the brouhaha, so to speak. Or is, it maybe, is it a gentle storm or something about whether or not not they were reversing to manual or not manual and all of those things. And there is information I watch on, on Twitter. You know, some people say that you know, INEC is going back to the manual transmission. Of course, INEC has come out to say, no, that's not the case. The laws are very clear on the mode of transmission. It's actually quite detailed in the sections that were quoted. Mm -hmm. uh, do you think there was any value, any merit to all of that composition in the first place? The arguments about whether or not INEC was to revert into the manual transmission? Well, um, to say the fact, um, people are very, very um, observant and critical of any action that will derail the interest that the people have already consummated in their mind. Mm -hmm. So any faulty statement that is made by the electoral umpire is being critically examined. Mm -hmm. And so therefore, it is very important to give a caution to INEC to be wary of the statement in which they dish out. Mm -hmm. Because at any point in time they make those statements, it can be miscalculated to mean something else, and then it will ignite a lot of fire. Uh, well, I can also say that um, INEC was quick uh, of making clarification with regard to the processes of the result that's supposed to be uh, uh, kind of announced and the way in which it should be announced. Uh, many of us who have been in the electoral system know very well that INEC for a while have been collating results manually, which a lot of us kicked against, and as a result of it, we had the new electoral act which will add value to the system. And the Edo and Undo election was a, a prototype of this particular result coalition, which quickly eliminate the coalition center that was the Mongols coalition center where uh, uh, figures skyrocket within the short period of time. Now, the way in which the result has been sent recently has given hope to Nigerians. And so, if it is, seems to be like as if it's been jettisoned by complication of the word of the mouth, a lot of people will kick against you. We did kick against it, but when we saw the clarification, it resonated and then gave back the, the, the trust that we are hoping to have mm. in INEC. Do you think that people generally are comforted with that? There are those who will also mean, because anything government, as you said, people are extremely critical these days because of uh, a huge level of distrust over time. INEC has enjoyed trust, but then with such you know, conflicting statements, if I can use the term, yes. that come out occasionally. Yes. Uh, it, it whittles that confidence. Do you True. think people are comforted, especially the political class? Well, you cannot say they are comforted because their eyes will be, especially the Nigerian youth who have resonated so well with my our own candidate, and they are looking at every position, every action that is being taken to be seen as the anti-people's process. They will kick against it. They will. They will. They will make a lot of noise. So, uh, we are watching. We can't say we'll be a hundred percent sure. To us, we can only be comforted by the time we win election in 2023, and then we are obediently in, uh, and usefully in office. Are, are then you, we are confident. Are you confident. sure? Are you confident that that is going to happen? Oh, definitely, we are sure because what we are running is a people-driven system that is being powered by these people. And this has we'll, also got hands in we'll what talk our about the <laughs> We'll talk about the resurgence of the, the, the third force and the Labour Party movement Thank you. Um, subsequently and in a, in a short while. But yes. let's finish off with the electoral process. Yes. Uh, are you worried? Because this is the first time the BVAS and, uh, will be deployed on a large scale. And, you know, we're talking about... Uh, a collation of results in 774 local government areas mm. and thousands and thousands of polling units. Mm. So um, the, the part that INEC talked about, manual collation of results, is the counting before the uploading and then you now check on the IREV portal. So are you worried about the humongous logistics that would, you know, follow that process and the need for transparency, you know, at that level as well? 
Okay. Uh, pardon me for my excitement about the law being shown to us. So <laughs> now back to your question. The INEC, under the leadership of Professor Mahmoud Yaqub, did a fantastic job because I was an observer in Edo and Undo election. And what I saw was a practical example of the ZPAD. Remember very well, at the point in time, elections have been announced by the Nigerian people in different status. There were social media masters who would tell you that their political party is the one leading or their political party is leading the party. There was conflicting results. But at the election of Undo and Edo, there was no complication as to get to announce results. And that, of course, have shown that INEC was able to deploy those machines to perfectly work at the way they wanted. And so the, the kind of upsurge of uh, manipulation was not really too seen. There's a margin of possibility, probability in that particular election, which, of course, you can ignore. So I think learning from that, INEC can improve on the issue of deployment of the Beaver's machine and all. And of course, we have already seen it happening in Ocean State. So, it has helped to build trust. And I want to say here, those are some of the mechanisms that have made the Nigerian youth especially to believe that their vote will count. And so, therefore, they are hoping to really advance on it and then making sure that whatever INEC puts on the ground, it seems to be solid. So that is why we have to caution INEC for making statements that will contradict some of the gains that they've already made over the years. Mm. Uh, no. there, sorry, mm. just, just a quick follow-up on okay. what you just said. Are there aspects of the process that are manual, that are giving concerns? Well, uh, at the moment, uh, not really, but we will have wished there was an advancement. Normally, what INEC does is this. At every polling unit, there is supposed to be an announcement of the result. After collating, accounting the result, everybody at that point, there and there, right there, you, at, the right there at the polling unit, mm -hmm. they announce the result. And this, these are recorded manually. Mm. Okay? You... The only record manually, they will make sure that they paste it on the wall. Mm. And then everybody will see. The same result now is being transmitted by either the ZPAD or the, v, uh, or the mechanism electronically to the server of INEC. So there's no contradiction as regards to what you see on the board and at the same time what was transmitted. So when you get to their coalition center, when they are announcing a general election, mm -hmm. either in the state assembly, federal house of assembly, or governor, or uh, 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 presidency, they collated it while they were the service, and then they collated it manually. So I guess probably that was what they were trying to explain. They, but they explained it wrongly for people to say they are just processing the issue of the electronic processing. But actually, we know that it is not like that. But they should be mindful. They should maintain the status quo of the process in which they are known with, so that not to create a kind of misinformation within the society. In anticipating that process, what it would look like, you know, ahead of February 2023, do you worry that in remote areas where there may be no network, there could be challenges and perhaps a question mark on the credibility of the process at that level? Well, uh, a little bit to give credit to INEC. ENEC has been able to, to thought, think it through that it may have this kind of problem. So to provide alternative way of transmitting the result. And I don't think they've had challenges at regard to contradiction of the result. What we want to see is to ensure that that particular transmission and calculation of the voting that was done. Because every one of the political party must have two, at least two agents at the polling unit. In fact, every political party that has its agent across the 178,000 uh, 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 polling unit should be able to know the result of his own candidate at the time in which election has been announced at each polling unit. Because each of the agents should be able to collect that particular result. And if there is conf conflicting result, because every copy will be given to an agent. Every copy will be given to an agent. So if you have your agent at the polling unit, you have your copy of the result that is announced by INEC, including the people who voted will see and hear the result. So they themselves, if they have a network, they should be able to have the same equal result as the agent has, as INEC has, and there should not be any completion. Now, what are the challenges? I mean, one of the critical stakeholders in this entire process, uh, Dr. Tanko, is the political class, yes. the politicians themselves, yes. their agents, and all of those things. Uh, sometimes the interpretation that is put out to people is with the intent to either discredit or to 
position the process in such a way that if people are not careful, things can be compromised. In that light, what kind of conversations should be com or communication should be coming from the political class in order to foster confidence among the voters? Because if that's not also fine-tuned, uh, people are just going to continue to say the same thing, like, well, they already decided what they want to do. Mm. And that is why it is very, very important that our politicians should learn that already the Nigerian people have suffered enough. They have suffered enough for them to now continue to create a hoax where there is nothing. And they should be able to major on credible, free, and fair elections. And they should major most of the statement that comes out of their mouth to be uh, policy and, uh, 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 what do I call it, campaign that are based on ideology and then they are based on policy and they are based that are interested in that they, they are very justifiable for the interests of the Nigerian people, which of course is a clean campaign based on issues. And, and I want to commend our, our own presidential candidate in this regard. He has tried to maintain that. If other could follow suit in that regard, to devoid from monk sliding, name calling, backbiting, but major on issues. And um, uh, 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 our presidential candidate, Peter Obi, has made it very, very clear that this campaign should be major on issue based. So if they could kill along that line, then the Nigerian people will be seeing something that is more different from mm. the past. And, and these are the kind of messages that need to be sent we'll, to we'll, the Nigerian people. We'll take it to my colleagues in Abuja in a moment, but for you and for your party, what are those issues that should determine the direction or the progression that people should be going talking about the elections? Well, what are the issues that you, you think you would say people must bear in mind when they are thinking about any candidate? Very good. Um, basically, the Labour Party has a vision. And the vision is actually hinged on the Nigerian people. What is actually an ideologically based political party? deeply rooted in social democracy, which is, of course, what you are seeing in the upsurge of the Nigerian you wanting to be. For a very long time, you know, as I know, the Nigerian people, I tell you the youth, are completely disconnected with politics. But for the first time, because of the advent of Peter Obi, a lot of them have started coming in, and they want to own the process. And that is what the Labour Party represents. With that particular action, it is very, very clear that the Nigerian people want to see things that will turn around their own lives. Such as? Such as one, for example, based on the manifestos of the Labour Party and the charter of demand of the Nigerian Labour Congress and the, and the policy document of the TUC, which is being collapsed into one, the Nigerian people are not gullible. They just wanted to see a country that gives them jobs opportunity. Changing their life from a consumption nation to a productive nation, which is always the statement of uh, Peter Obi, and apart from that, they want to see a Nigerian nation that is built on good, solid educational background. Which, of course, when you talk to individuals, they can be able to communicate with you directly. They want to see an, a country that is deeply secured, which is a practical example of what Peter Obi have been able to do in, in Anambra State. Just a very quick clarification, but it will seem as if the Labour Party <clears throat> is just waking up from its slumber, you know, for example, well after the INEC window for the uh, submission of candidates, names of candidates had closed, uh, the, candi the candidate for your party just emerged in Kaduna State, I think on the 10th of August, to be precise. How did it pull that off? And then is it... Uh, fielding as many candidates as required for representation at all levels, you know, in government, i.e. the National Assembly and State Assemblies. Oh, truly so. Truly so. You see, I, I just came back from Zamfara State. Uh, the Labour Party created a, a, a pl platform uh, under the leadership of Julius Aburi and the Secretary, Ibrahim uh, Faru. All of the zones were divided into six and the NWC member was shared accordingly to go and sensitize the people. So we just came back from Zamfara, Kebi, Sokoto, Kaduna, Kano, Jigawa, from my home state, Kano. It's amazing the kind of upsurge of love that was being shown. So therefore, the, and the coming up of the Labour Party and then the joining of the forces that the name Peter Obi has brought into the particular fold created a lot of interest. And this interest, of course, resulted to candidate, imagine, and some other person will say, look, 
probably I feel that I cannot be able to deliver. Maybe my name was done, was put in after a primary, and I felt I don't have the capacity. Another person who will come in who is more stronger and more acceptable, I am stepping down for that particular person. Mm. In a wide political party, you would take that person. There's an understanding of a revolution by vote happening right now. Okay. And that is what we are seeing. So that is maybe the result of what you saw as it got to the changing of names and people coming in. Even our vice presidential candidate, at the end of it all, we had the DG, Dr. Doni Okupe, who has been doing a marvelous job. But at the point in time, he too has to drop and give another younger person with a very sound qualification in Deti Baba Ahmed to be the... So what happened in Kaduna was a replacement? Is that what of you're saying? Of course it was a replacement. Okay. Yeah. Well, let, let's uh, toss this to Abuja, my colleagues there. I think I have some questions for you. Go ahead, guys. All right, um, you know, Dr. Sanko, what do you say to those who think, wait a minute, um, quite a number of uh, persons who are actually on hand to work and do certain things for the Labour Party happen to have been uh, largely drawn from the PDP and that from the look of things, the Labour Party's candidature cross board is likely going to hurt the PDP a lot more, even at the state level, uh, thereby making it a lot easier for the APC just walking to several key positions. Look, look uh, gentlemen, we're talking about rescuing Nigeria. Nigeria is in the dire need of all hands to be on deck. And so we cannot annihilate people who have decided to change and become more labor and tend to work for the Nigerian people. Honestly, the Nigerian people are tired. We want to see, we have a document of working. This document contained from the TUC and the NSA, as I said. Anybody that will work along that particular positioning of what our principal is selling to the Nigerian people will be able to tailor his attention towards that particular document, which, of course, is taking back Nigeria to, back to the Nigerian people, at the same time being taking Nigeria from a consumption nation to a production nation. So a lot of people have seen the light. And they want to go back from what they are, back, let me just use their ways that they found it negative to now come into the hands, the light, so that they can be able to help in rescuing Nigeria. So we want all hands to be on deck. And some of the people, yes, they must have come from the PDP, but we are guided with our document. It's not that we are new. We are going to work on the way in which PDP or any other political party that anybody wants to join the Labour Party will do. No, the document will be our guiding principle to get Nigeria out of the wood, and we need all hands. Well, so um, because you, yes, you need all hands, but is it a fair assessment when people say what they can see is that they see the central focus on the on Labour Party delivering at the presidential level, that every other level they can afford to compromise. Is no. that right, if people think that? No, 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 no. We are going all the way. We have our candidates all the way from the State Assembly to the Federal House of Representatives, Senate, and governorship. There's nowhere we are not filling our candidates. We have all of them filling their form. I've been in the Secretariat, so I know if I said that we are fielding candidates, yes, we may have some challenges along the line, which every political party has, but we are fielding candidates along the line, down the line, to make sure that every position that's supposed to be filled, we field it. And if we have challenge with INEC, we will take it up in the court of law so that they can be able to take care of our outstanding issues. But to say that probably we are going only for the presidency, completely no. We are going all the way down. Because if we don't get it from the grassroots, from the state assembly, how do you expect to get all of these uh, beautiful ideas down the line to protect the Nigerian people? It can't happen. So what we are asking is that we so want all these candidates to vote for the Labour Party down the line. It will be dangerous for any person who wants to vote to be thinking that he will vote for only our president and then not voting for the state assembly and the federal house uh, representative and senate. No, they should vote for every member of the party who has emerged as a candidate of the party. Well, uh, 
Um, Dr. Tanko, you know you're not supposed to start campaigning yet. No, I am not. I'm doing the campaign. Fact. Oh, but, sorry. Okay. <laughs> just just want to put that out there. We have to thank you very much for being thank here. Thank you very this much morning. for having Dr. me. Dr. is spokesperson for the Third Force Coalition of Labour Party. Thanks so much. Thank for you very time. much. And God bless the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Thank you.